at this, right? They are throwing the con smoke in on this B aggression. It's just going to be a B play out of the gate. Now, that smoke has given a nice early warning sign to OG to come in on this rotation. And Man 2 here already does have teammates in rotation ready to hold the line behind him. Whoa. He's getting pressured. Man 2 going to fall to Diha, but we're left in kind of even odds. It's a three on four, but with a bomb down, Sprout, they're still feeling fine with how this round is shaped up. The flash doesn't like really enable too much of a peak, but actually, as I say that, Bavin's just peaked on out and <laughs> taken MVK out of the round. So, smoke now down on the bomb. Favin Ooh. here, Snatchy hidden in the smoke. Down goes Favin, but this is where Snatchy... Oh, 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 oh no! Stabbing, stabbing, ah. but he can't find them. What's happening? <laughs> That's so chaotic. They're stabbing, he's stabbing. It's, it's, it's chaos, Hugo. Yeah. It's absolute chaos. But OG, they were saying they love chaos. I don't know if that's what they had in mind. Maybe they're on about the NA organization. Who knows? Uh, I think the longer he waited there before going for that first stab, the more success he would have had. But, you know, he's already in a one-on-three. He hears the tap. It wasn't a stick. It was only a tap. And then he just goes right for it. And at that point, OG have three on the site to bring out their own knives to play. The old left, right, good night. And OG are going to find their first here in this series. Sprout not forcing up too heavily. They got a bomb plant, and that's going to enable Deagles. We've got a grenade on Fab and could just throw it out of main towards the bomb train. He's actually taken it towards pop side. So getting control of the ladder room, potentially. MBK, he's got his own amount of control. Push down Ivy with that smoke. D is going to fall back, avoiding more utility. And they will go, go into Pop Dog, but there's nothing here. I love how OG have got the AWP in round two. Absolute mad, lads. Versus the pistols, that is obviously very dangerous, but the knife kill giving a bit of bonus money the way of the CT side. And Mantu just waits. It's going to rotate inner, but Sprout, they've grouped up on Ivy. This smoke from MBK has faded, and he's fallen back as a result. You'll notice the utility is quite low for OG already. And so that's going to enable these Deagles to start finding opening kills. Issa moving into Pop Dog. Would be lovely to see him get flashed in, but he instead peeks it dry and he does get out ahead of Favin. So now down into this three man Ivy play, and MBK's gotten the information. Mansu's holding it down with an AWP, no less. And AWP in round two, you hate to see it. If you sprout, they get dropped on the push. Spiddy, the only man left standing. Woo! On the ladder! Alexa V goes down. That's a nice little, uh, nice little trick there. A bit cheesy. Not going to get away with that again, but uh, it will find uh, at least a couple of kills here for Sprout and around where they don't really have a whole lot. We're waiting for the guns, though, and that will come through here and now. OG should be able to upgrade some of these SMGs as well, considering they lost players. MBK still taking the hit, as is tradition, but... Uh Everyone else is absolutely fine into this third round. Now, what has Sprout got to show, right? This is their map pick. They're starting on the T side. This is a huge game to get to the playoffs. Neither of these teams really were the expected victor of their opening match. Just keep in mind, what this game could have been is Big Nip, which we had in the lower bracket. Harry, you love that one, don't you? But uh, yeah, that was a great game for sure, but it ended in Big getting eliminated. Right now, no elimination station. Ooh. Nice try from Mantu. It's not going to hit the flick. Smoking off Ivy and moving away. Notice we've got a B play with a bomb as well. Sprout are putting pressure on Ivy, trying to come in on this late flank. But OG aren't falling for it. They've already rotated to B with two. Yeah, we're very, very used to seeing Valder be a bit of a monster here in this B site, anchor oh. hold down. And he's going to have to be as he loses his teammate, Fabin, with a double entry to open up B. And now this double Ivy flank is coming in. And, and this is actually quite nice. Like, so often you just see one player left to trickle on through from Ivy. The fact that they've got two wrapping means the OG have to be very, very careful if they wanted to even attempt this retake because there's already players in the back line. And so they just concede the round. They just give it up on the back of that. They know what's going on. They know that they can't really play into it. And with Issa oh. flanking through main, he got all the information that these Ivy players have moved in towards CT. So, yeah, it's just a save call for OG. I actually think the fact that we had two Sprout players on Ivy, like you mentioned, was the reason OG weren't really ready for that B play, right? That's a bit of a rarity. It's usually one luck because, uh, you know, OG already had two B. They certainly could have put, up, put, could have put up a hold MBK, he's connector with a smoke for the ramp. He spots him come out upper, and he tries to take the fight with the SMG uh, versus AKs out top 
B. Bit of a dangerous one. He immediately loses his life. Here's the shot from Favon. It's a great shot, don't get me wrong, but definitely a fight that MBK doesn't need to take there. Could just fall into the site and try and play close. Not the end of the world, though. Obviously, we got Mansu in the server donning a British flag. Today is the birthday of one of Counter-Strike's British legends. No, I'm not talking about Smoother or someone like that. Someone even more important, even more integral, and just as powerful in the server. It's Henry G. So happy birthday to him. Oh, yeah. And I have him here with me in the studio. Henry, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex Machine Richardson. Yes, we'll be getting into round four swiftly as Favon exits it, dropping down the pop dog. Alexi B finds him early on. And OG a man up. They're going to re-smoke it as well. Dennis will get down, but he won't hang around. And Sprout are take, uh, taking the bomb towards Ivy this time with two more. Worth noting on that B play, they actually planted uh, on the right side of the bomb train. And so it was at least open for CT. So if things did get hairy, if OD, o, OG did try to retake that one, those CT players would have the bomb open for them. That's always a bit of a danger. Flash up Ivy. It's going to catch both his sprouts, slowing them down. MBK getting mollied. He's got to run. That might spread. You never know. Molotovs can be fickle at times. He actually would have survived, but now they've heard him move away. And this boost from Snatchy looking for a kill. There it is, he gets rewarded. Another Molotov and MVK tried to move back into safety, but the Mothman of OG gets betrayed by his attraction to the Flames, Mantu and Valder. Left in this one in a two on four, the bomb down. I have to say, I'm absolutely loving the way that Sprout are approaching these takes into these bomb sites. Like the way that they're splitting this site in two, they did it at B with the Ivy flank. They've done it again in the A site, splitting main and Ivy is so cool. Like look at how constricting that was for OG. They, they they had no ground left. Like they were they were tucked into the bomb site, having to kind of cower away and hope that the fights come to them. Mansu looking to hold on to this AWP, and he is holding down Ivy side. But if this AWP gets dropped, that's a bit of a disaster. Luckily enough, he uh, nails that shot, the shot that he had to hit. So a second on the board for Sprout. They tie us up nice and early at two to two. Weapons saved, but that's going to be all OG have moving into this fifth round. Yeah, this has got to feel great for Sprout. You know your game plan is working wonderfully right now. You force back-to-back -back saves for OG. That's not comfortable. It's not where you want to be on the CT side of train. And uh, yeah, MBK, he really gets unlucky there, right? That first molly, he, he has to move. Even though it doesn't reach the corner, you don't know. Those mollies can spread at the last possible second. And uh, is that Tom Eric at the bomb? Is he is he tuning in on the I thought he would have cam? a better camera. It's certainly yeah, come like, on. That was some pretty grainy quality. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have this man's meant to be that. produced at our shows. And there he is in glorious 144p. Ashamed. I expected better. But... Uh, yeah, MBK, he has to move out right, and then he go and they hear him cross out. They hear him because uh, he runs through the molly, and then when he tries to get back in that corner, they re-molly as well. Snatchy's boosted up. I love that Ivy boost. We don't get to see that enough. Obviously, you're super open to every position, but it's the last thing. If that side of Ivy is smoked, it's the last thing a CT's going to expect. Eco now for OG. They've got to play around the AWP, and M4 held on uh, in the previous round. Alexi B's got to smoke, but he's not playing that inner side to drop it on ramp. Hanging around in the connector. Dennis drops pop. But there's going to be little threats coming out this position. Both guns are on B, and Sprout have no interest in that site. I love Dennis's profile picture, man. He looks so surprised. Like, he wasn't expecting the picture to get taken. Oh, hey. He's like, whoa. Funny seeing you <laughs> here. Yeah, fancy seeing you here, huh? Alexa B, behind the E-box. No, he's not going to find him first. Instead, it's MBK cut down. Now, Alexa B. How's he going to get out of this one? Oh, goodness. Oh, no. Fire and electricity. They don't go well together, and the E-Box mollied out. That's going to be Alexa B falling. Oh, another one for Dennis. On to three now, they say sight. It, it might seem like it's ripe for the taking, but these two players with weapons have moved in to try and hold the fort. Valder and Mantu both here. Sprout are being so patient. I love this. Like, if you're going to win a game, you want to be getting an OG's head. And certainly that's what they're doing right now, right? Like, with how they've approached these last few rounds, it's been these splits into bomb sites that have been so damn good. In this one, in a five on two, they're not rushing. They're not running. You know, they're not jumping the gun, rather, up against this AWP and M4. They are giving so much time for OG to start to doubt themselves. And as a result, Mansu actually wasn't here at the A site as these players come out. Valder oh, trying to hold 
called it down from heaven, but now they know he's here. And suddenly this position, while it looked great, he's actually trapped and he's going to get naded out. So it all falls on Samansu and he's likely going to have to save in this 1v4, now turned one on three. And even though he gets that kill, it's not enough to entice him to go for the retake. Yeah, if Faude finished off Spinny, right, if he took that kill in the two on five, maybe this would be a viable round for Mantu. And even though he does finish the job, it's, it's not a... A job worth taking at this round. It's going to be th a third for Sprout. And yet for OG, every round you lose here on the CT side, it's just another sigh like, oh, that's another round we need to win in the second half if we need to pick this game up. And we know they have had their struggles on the T side of train. So it's not going to be an easy affair here. Sprout making it slow and low. At least guns coming back for OG, right? We've had a, a few saves with some pistols and a couple of guns on the wrong site in that round. Just a gamble, just a guessing game. And at least they get away with the AWP as well. Remember, this was bought up in round two and it's still in the hands. Look at our dude in the bottom left. who splashed out on the green screen just <laughs> for the occasion. I love the dedication, man. I absolutely love it. He's got the Sprout background on show. And let's see. Sprout in this round. They do get a man fast out through main. That was Spiddy. He tried to capitalize on a pop dog kill, but it didn't quite present itself. They do know, though, that they've got Issa trapped down here in the pop dog. And his retreat is now solidified by Alexa B actually pushing up and taking main control. So he at least has been given an avenue to get the hell out of here. But Fabin just hops down and deals with him, leaving them in a five on four. Alexa B is going to now creep into the pop dog to take up Issa's position. This leaves Main a little bit vulnerable. And so you can see the effect this has had across the minimap. Mansu has rotated over from B. Valdez taken a very passive lie at this B bomb site. And while all this is going down, OG is still pushing and prodding at Main, just making their presence here known as the rest of the gang tiptoe their way over towards B. This is an excellently cool T side right now. Sprout are just doing everything they can to make this as painful as possible. Nice tag onto Spitty, but it's going to have really no effect as Sprout hit this B bomb site. Rotates in, are in for OG. Alexi B molly out. Pop can't even flank up the ladder, but Valde talking him up. He is up and above everyone on this B bomb site. Bomb dropped on the ramp. MBK holding strong with a double from the connector, and Valde doesn't know how deep Dennis has gotten, but it goes both ways. Dennis waiting for Valde to overstep the mark, hoping he makes a mistake. Does get a kill. MBK falling at the back of CT. Valde pushed in towards upper. That grenade could do good damage, and they need to cover the plant. Valde doesn't doesn't swing off the back of getting hit down to 10. And so it's him and Alexi on the retake. They line up all the info there. Spitty trapped the oil, and Valde coming in from the top line. Spitty hits a shot, and it's a one on one. The mine game versus the in game leader of OG. He's creeping around the back, but he's getting flanked as well. And Alexi B is going to save the day for OG. Plenty of time to go and salvage that AWP for Mantu, perhaps, wherever it was dropped. There it is. And there's the round. That's going to be OG finding three, equaling up. And also, right there is what we wanted from MBK, right? We saw him on that B-site connector rotate the other round, and he just got domed by Fav when he had the MP9. But this time with the M4, he deals with Sprout coming down the ramp. He slows everything down, dropping the bomb, finding one more. Experience showing through, and even though Sprout get the plant, enabling another buy with plenty of money left up, including the AWP, it's still going to be OG feeling pretty good about that reaction. Oh, Valde trying to go aggressive, but he does get forced back. Sprout continuing with this very, very slow style, and I love it. It's nice as well, because like there was a time period where it felt like whenever we saw teams playing slowly, they, they, they weren't like... And, you know, maybe this just, obviously it just comes down to like the team, right? But some teams, they don't do a great job of pressuring the map while still keeping a slow style of play. Oh. But that's not a problem for Sprout. They're trying to hold on to these key areas, though. And OG, they get a bit sick and tired of all this waiting around. They, they, they push the, uh, the boat out. They go aggressive into main and they snatch two away. And so, you know, immediately, whatever the game plan was for Sprout, that's now out the window. Alexa B is very, very low, and so a nade could find him, but there's no utility left for Sprout. As a result, they've just got to peek into these orbs, into these long angles, 
with nothing to help them out other than their wits. Snatchy needs to nail this shot and he's not able to do so. Mantu, oh, almost the third, does get the tag and looking to finish the job. Baldur's going to snatch it away from him. Well, right there is actually kind of what you were hinting to, Harry, in that some teams, you know, struggle to play this slow default because the, the danger of this, training is not a very traditional Counter-Strike map, right? The danger of playing these slower rounds is, uh, is exactly what OG do there, right? They get aggressive, they flash into positions and they take early kills and Sprout already down two players immediately. So nice stuff from OG, being proactive, not letting Sprout bleed out the time. And even though there's an attempted trade swing from the Pop Dog, OG just have so many players on that A site, as you should, to take him down. Sprout left with nothing but pistols in this one. Train can be a very weird map at times, right? Like teams just swapping between going for those immediate A bursts that, you know, are just honestly 50-50 at times and then really sweating the clock and trying to pressure every position. The danger of that is, is you often leave like one player a spot, right? You'll have a guy Ivy, you'll have one main, you'll have one pop, and then you'll have someone holding B and then, you know, the extra player can come, kind of float. But obviously the danger of that is, is having a, a two-man aggressive CT push take you down. There's very little you can do against that if the utility's placed well. And in that round it was. OG, talking to nades, don't have many left. Having to use this Ivy Smoke and early mollies in the T-Con. Because you know at some point, even with this from Sprout, even with these slow T rounds, eventually, when they feel the time is right, they are going to run and gun out of T-Con. And so just that conditioning means OG have to use utility early every single round. Otherwise, Sprout might take a gap. Issa just made noise going up the ladder and drops down. That's drawn the attention in and Sprout. They don't even consider Alexa B. MBK gets glocked out of the round, but that should be it in terms of the damage here for Sprout. And indeed it is. So a fifth on the board for OG. They deal with that eco nicely. They keep it pretty clean. And they're feeling a little bit better now, stumbling back to their feet here. I would like to see a bit of a faster round at some point, right? Just to keep that pressure on, yeah. as you say. I think that's very, very important because one of the problems we've seen, even with a team like Na'Vi, right, who prolifically like to be a, a reasonably slow team on a Mac like train, uh, one of the problems with teams like that, you find, is that if you get used to them being very, very slow, then you do just hold on to that util. And so finally, we have a bit of a, a, bit of a faster round, at least from Spitty. He goes out through main, he wastes all that utility out. So a lot of Molotovs, a lot of nades getting dumped early on. Now, while Spitty does get caught, it's not the end of the world. At this point, Sprout, they've uh, they've set themselves up well to try and find a round. And it would get even sweeter if they can catch on to Valdez being aggressive outside of this B site. He's pushed up into the halls and he does best Favon in that head-to-head. -head. That feels like a very key fight to win because now, not only have you lost your upper control, Valde is allowed to just stay here. That enables a four-man stack in this A bomb site. So it's so much information for the side of OG and it allows an even heavier presence on the other side of the map. And now Sprout, they're constantly scared of him pushing as well. They, they, they don't want a, a flank to come through and their plan to get abruptly ended. So they've got to try and retake this control, try and get Valdi out of this position. Flash in, Valdi dodges it, goes back, and there's the drop. Spinny with no teammates to trade, his teammate is in Pop Dog. They are going to split this A site and find it. Very good kills. Diha dropping MBK down on Ivy. Now that bomb is still back in spawn, and so Snatchy will have to return for it. That could really slow things down, and with 25 on the clock, things are problematic. Mantu looking for this pop lurk. He knows that Dennis is here and dropping this smoke. Mantu's holding a passive line. Doesn't need to play aggressive with a time in the favor of OG. Oh, oh. The timing on that. Mantu was holding for that exact peak. Now Valdez helped out and Issa able to get one more. It's down to this 1v1. Uh -oh. Snatchy looking for the player pushing in through Ivy. He's going to try and get this bomb down. Valdez knows he has to be sticking that plant. So the nade finds good damage. 
Snatchy on the bomb train. Oh, oh, that's so damn quick. I didn't even realize he got the kill. Snatchy locking it in in the 1v1. And it's another round for Sprout. Four on the board now. When they've got the rifles, when they've got all their pieces, they do look deadly. That's an unreal shot. This guy has big boots to fill, right? With Searson previously being on this Sprout roster, we know how explosive him uh, as an AWPer could be moving over to big. But Snatchy, that is a great flick. That is a very, very key clutch. And yeah, I like to be a bit shocked after that one. I don't blame you. You don't expect Valdi to lose something like that. I think maybe even the nade for Valdi is a, a, a bit of a problem. Snatchy doesn't know where he's coming from, right? He Valdi goes for the long rotation all the way around, previously in B halls, down through CT, coming in through Ivy. But he throws a grenade. It does do good damage. He hits Snatchy in the face, but it's not enough to win the round. And Sprout are going to find four. OG's last buy before they're broke. MBK might have to take another SMG here. It's on the Famous instead. Still got enough for utility too. And it's not like Sprout are rich either, right? They win the round, but only just. And so we got Galils and, you know, lack of util on some of these T-sided players. But a round's a round, and they're going to be happy they got it, keeping things close. Not letting OG run away with his CT side. Sprout even trying to retake T main. OG is suffocating with how much control they're getting. We've seen MBK push Ivy, Valdi in the box halls. And this is even going to flash himself into pop the jump. I don't know if that was necessary. He might have hit the shot considering Dennis had turned around. But by the time he's hit the ground, he's already gone from it. Oh dear. That is not the start OG needed. And MBK wants to patch that wound. Oh no, is this about to make it even worse? MBK up close. Ooh. Oh, dear. Ooh. little jump scare. There he is. It's a fake <laughs> flash in. That was thrown from Alexa B. Throws the decoy into pop, designed, you know, hoping that they look away from it, anticipating it's a flashbang. But it was one player playing anti flash. And so, you know, the, the, they already had that safety net in place. And the fact that it wasn't actually a flashbang there comes back to punish OG. Nice idea, but didn't work out. Mantu now holding it down with the AWP. Has Snatchy and Diha, the Polish duo, on the other side. Oh, and Snatchy's my. gonna come out ahead, clears the close angle. And now this has forced the rotation back to A, but look at the bomb, it's in the B site. And OG oh. have no idea. Sprout are the most annoying team to play against. Snatchy is in with another. And this round comes to a close. It's them tying it up at five to five. This this T side is just masterfully cool right now, right? You can see how frustrating it must be for OG, and that's why they're feeling the need to play aggressive because they're just being faked out. It, it goes both ways, though. You can dig yourself a deep hole, like here, right? It's uh, now there. It, maybe he was trying to jump and do what many players do, coming into a position like that. Jump so you hit your head on the roof and you just bounce a little bit. You don't go flying high like this did. Maybe he missed the jump. Could have been an accidental. Scroll wheel. Yeah, it could go. have been, Harry. There's many explanations. All we know is the result. And boy, it's not pretty. Not for OG, at least. And yeah, it, it, you're already down a man. MBK goes back in and he dies as well. Then you're in a three on five. And of course, you're gambling A when Sprout have found two picks in that out of sight. That's all the more reason they went B. Because Sprout are like playing with the, the minds of OG so much, I think it's, it's oh my. the I know this is nuts. Yeah. Man. I get like motion sickness now from watching this. It's so good. Uh, but no, like I, I think this is the perfect team to try and get in the heads of because there's so many IGLs. I feel like there must come a point where like everyone believes they have a solution. Like everyone believes they know what's going on. And it's just been misdirection after misdirection from Sprout. And that's the perfect way to have like you know, that, that too many cooks in the kitchen vibe that this OG squad can have at times really start to, to pipe up and cause some problems. This round, they, they, they get a man through Ivy and he's kind of, Ooh. oh dear, hang on. This, this round could get a little bit spicy now. The bomb should just go down in B and a lot of the danger should get mitigated by the fact that they've been faster on this B offensive. They even spot a man flanking. However, like maybe that sets a bit of a warning sign that, oh goodness, they might have stacked this B site. That's where Diha is like a nice little fail safe right he gets the information that b is clear and so now the rest of the squad just walk on in so that flank the timing that diha was able to hit has actually just enabled this b play yeah, when in reality, uh, you know, Diha making noise up Ivy meant that after OG pushed Tcon, they split 2-2, two, two, two down Ivy, two on the B flank. So you know, Sprout, you know, they're worried for a second, but they go, okay, guys, we have the guns, they're on pistols, let's just trade effectively. They walk out heaven together and there's no trade needed. There's no kills to be found. 
F1 to move too far away from the bomb, but no one there for OG. They've triple set up in CT. Diha, pressure's on you, bud. Don't want to give away an M4, but he's going to walk into three. Now the trade for Favon. Oh dear, they could line up. Mantu's grabbed the gun. He saved his teammates' life. Get down, Mr. President. Alexa B's turn, but they all know he's here. And Dennis is going to clean it up. No guns saved here for OG. Not today. Six, uh, six for Sprout. And we've got the OGs of German CS leading Sprout to victory. Dennis and Spitty in control right now. Dennis at 10 kills. I do love that we've started to have like an influx of, of, of Polish talent into these other yeah. international squads. Poland is it was such like a good re, uh, a good region for up and comers in CS, but it felt like the honestly, you know, as sad as it is to say, like the VP squad kind of like ended up suffocating that that's that tier yeah. two of the uh, the Polish scene for so long, right? And you were just eclipsed by this team that stopped giving the results you were used to. So it is really nice to see some of these names that everyone was considering to move into that VP team back then, now finding their footing in other avenues. And I think it's going to make them more well-rounded individuals and better players as a result, you know, just because it has been an uphill battle for a lot of them. Even if you look at Snatchy, right, he had that stint in the VP team. So, yeah. you know, he was one of the lucky ones, I guess, if that's the word you would want to use, who was... Uh, he was bought up through the ranks. We had AGO for so long, and they were they were really exciting, of course, with Snatchy in as well. So uh, I think the only other player that a lot of people are, are talking about as well is someone like Mihu, who's over in Envy, right? Team's been a bit quiet recently, but maybe we'll see some more from them in the future. Not here at ESO One Cologne, though. Sprout, little B fake. Hoping to draw rotations. They've walked three up Ivy with a bomb. Now, MBK is still here. He's not uh, shuffling over just yet. Uh, no one's really moving. Aside from this double B setup, which OG have been leaning towards for good reason. Dennis is going, guys, it's clear. They might be stacked outer, but now he's been caught. Valde hiding on the train. MBK, good patience. Will it pay off? Oh, he moves and then gets peaked. Welcome to Counter-Strike. Spitty finding the opening kill on A, but the bomb getting dropped in the AWP with it. Snatchy gone. Spitty wrapping Mantu's in the fire. He can't move away. And Issa gets shot in the back as well. Even late lurk from Ivy. Diha with his second, and now Valde in the clutch. Out from Pop Dog, very, very fast, but Spitty here could catch a great timing to deal with him. Valde gets that kill, and he's not ready for Spitty already back in main, so it's seven on the board for Sprout. They continue this great T side. And one of the problems when a T side starts to spiral out of control like this, you know, this being the fourth round in a row for Sprout, is that the CTs, even with that loss bonus building up, you get stuck in like this this back to back pattern of, you know, you lose a round, you buy. If you lose that round, well, then you're down into a partial investment, then you lose that, and then you just rinse, repeat that cycle, and it's very easy to get stuck in it. And then the other problems that brings with it is, you know, like you're, you're kind of running some lackluster utility. Maybe you don't have the AWP all the time that you want it. And, and you know, these problems can really start to, to dampen your ability to recover on the CT side. So pretty soon, before this half gets too far gone, we need OG to get around uh, and start to build back into the swing of things, because we are getting very, very late in this half now and down to pistols for OG. It's a heavy B presence this time from the international squad. And well, it looks like Sprout are considering this A bomb site as the place to be. Yeah, OG have quite a different opinion though. Three on inner and once again, wrong place for them. It's been so unfortunate. Even their gambles have been just incorrect. Alexi B might be calling for some support, especially with that kill. Dennis getting an opener, uh, and him and Spitty finding this A site once again for Sprout. Nothing OG can do but look to get exits here with the Deagles. And Sprout, so it feels too good to be true, right? They're clearing everything. Guys, we've only got two kills, but hey, I guess there's no one here. Free plant for us and OG. If they could grab an AK and get out, that'd be nice. But Sprout have not been throwing away these guns in the post plant. Even when they've had like Diha go out and lurks and, uh, and lose his life, it's often been traded. And other than the weapons that OG bring into the round that they often save as well, they can't really steal many away from Sprout. Look at this setup. Everyone's still hanging around on A. Nothing, you know, no reason to hunt as well if you're Sprout. You know on an eco round like this, OG are playing for exits and you don't you don't care about pistols, you don't care about taking away these guns. So why not just hang out together in T-Con? It's exactly what they'll do. 
Yeah, you put it right, Harry. I mean, this every round gets more and more important the later we get in. This is a CT side of map. I will say we've seen Counter Strike, especially online. You know, not not only with the fact that the the Krieg uh, meta came in earlier last year and and everything got more T sided, but even as things have gone back to normal. I think, you know, with things being online, you, you see so many more T-sided games as well. Peak is advantage, all of that, all of these good reasons. Wide swinging was a common term used by players when talking about online. And yeah, that can be very hard to deal with as a CT holding an angle, something that isn't as apparent on LAN. But regardless, you've got to make do with what you've got. And what Sprout got is a lot putting pressure on Ace, but he's been there every round, not even running out, just fighting blue, just forcing out utility and drawing the attention of OG so his team can take pop. It's not pop though, it's a fast B, and Man 2 will find one as the rest of them flood out into the site. Yeah, Man 2, crucially though, has bought time for these rotations to come in, and he's still alive, still a threat here. Now, do keep your eye on Dennis, who's gone very aggressive, but Alexa B peeking over the smoke, senses that something might be awry, and deals with him. Now, Snatchy here has Diha close, and oh, Diha's got the double! Down he goes, MBK gets the trade, Snatchy trying to peek back out, 21 points of health, he's in a rough spot, and he gets naded out of the round. Spitty now left in the clutch, he does deal with Valde, and just two players left to find MBK oh. damage onto him and the kill locked in it falls onto Mantu he taps the bomb but scoping up Spiddy one HP and a missed shot Mantu follows up with the kill but there's no time for the defuse it's nine on the board for Sprout as that bomb goes off they continue this deep T side run Try as man to might, it's not enough in the clutch. That's so unlucky as well. Both the kits for OG are dropped on the on the lane, right, by the gray train just in front of the ramp, but there's physically no time for him to go back for them. He was the he was the behold. He shouldn't even need to really worry about the kit. The AWPA as well, he's already spending enough money and he gets, uh, he gets a couple in the round, but it's all too little too late. Great work from Sprout, man. They're, they're just everything. Despite OG getting the man advantage, despite uh, you know Dennis being delayed coming down ramp with the bomb, and Sprout only just getting the plant, being in a three on five. D had doubles up on lane side and Sprout and make every round winnable. Five in a row. Six in a row. I'm not giving them enough credit. And maybe one more. Looking for double digits at the end of the half. I don't think we've seen OG, you know, be proactive, be aggressive as, as they were in the early rounds, right? Uh, you know, getting their first streak of three was off the back of, of pushing into T-Con, catching that pop flank as a uh, pop trade as well. But it is very hard to, to do it when Sprout are playing, you know, diff like they haven't run out of main. We, we were expecting that. They just haven't needed to. And why change now? Things are working wonderfully. They're running very sweaty, slow rounds, even though they throw every round this early utility and Spitty puts pressure on main. They don't commit. Nice kill from MBK. He takes the pop spawn, a position that Sprout have often been in first, and it's denied by OG. But we had a man advantage for them in the last round, and it didn't do them any favors. So will this be any different? Haven't been able to take pop back at the very, very least, or at least gets the information that no one was there. He doesn't commit to the position. Now actually will. Drop him down, coming Whoa. in a little bit late. He faked the rotation no. back up the ladder, so they take their eyes off Pop, and then when he comes out, everyone explodes in from main. Mantu has to try and hold the fort. A nice kill onto Spiddy, but can he follow up with any more? They smoke him off. That's going to force Mantu back. He has fouled it alongside him. These are the two players you would want to close out a two on three to try and salvage a, a sixth round for OG. There's Valde delivering one of the three kills needed. Do be sure to bear in mind that Diha has wrapped around close to this smoke. Favin's holding from Pop Dog. They tap the bomb. The bomb is planted for Pop. He's got this nifty little flash out through the window wow. and Valda is so damn blind. Oh. Mantu's looking the wrong way. They sprouts rotations and now they've got to do some of the, the work on their own over on this T side. I think it's probably a, a breath of fresh air for OG moving over to this half, getting to dictate the pace for a change rather than just be put in the wrong place. Triple nade for Sprout. Hello, it's going up and high into the pop dog, but OG are already down and out. They're already pushing through the connector into this B site. Oh, I love this already. And all that utility is gone for Sprout as they lose their players off the back of this push. What a great pistol from Issa. Double kill on the opener and a B bomb plant. How do you like a taste of your own medicine, huh, Sprout? 
I love that. I love that cool, man. You, you, they, they, they smoke off the bomb train with a little wall of smokes and then they push through it. They catch those players in rotation. If you're Sprout and you and you lose those players in the A site and then you see that there's a connector smoke down, the last thing you expect <laughs> is NBK of all people and Issa to come barreling through it with pistols and take your heads off. So I love that decision from OG. And that definitely feels like a bit of a flex, you know, like they, they want to send a message early on like okay yeah you might have bullied us in that first half but that ends now right like we're the ones dictating the flow we're the ones dictating the pace and so og they immediately set a good standard right out of the gate oh. mbk even hunts down snatchy that was a kit as how's well. that how's that snatchy <laughs> yeah he, he lost the kit and full armor also dennis i think was the one to get away with it for sprout but <laughs> look at how uh, look at how Dia's getting caught off right. He has a nade out. He's trying to throw it towards the bomb train. Stop this heavy setup. Sprout clearly had an idea there. They had their game plan with three full sets of utility, but they don't even get to use it because OG make it so quick. Here's the force in round two. Three scouts. I love this. We see Astralis do it from time to time when they do lose the pistol. It's a great, uh, great success. Snatchy taking his on B upper. He spotted an arm. Can he take a leg? Valde. Not going back in. He wants nothing to do with this. And uh, he's holding passive for this little aggressive play from Diha. There's the swing. It's traded. The scout finds a head. And that's a great shot from Snatchy, keeping Sprout a man up in this round. Oh, it's a big nade, but it just falls short. That could have made all the difference. That could have been Mantu out of the round. Dennis here. Oh, that's almost a lineup, and he does get a tag off. I love this triple scout train by your right. I remember when we saw Astralis pull this one in and it was it was a treat to see. Now we've got Sprout donning it to devastating effect. You can see why it's so deadly. Train is like the one map in the pool that lends itself to this buy so damn well. You force all these long range engagements out of, you know, SMG players for the most part and a few rifles here and there. And as long as you get a tag a peak, you know, you're winning the round. So Spitty up here in heaven with a scout, Fav and Boosted up in the connector. Speedy the Ooh. watchful eye. The eye of Speedy opens wide and does get tagged up by Issa. Damage done on the Deeg from Fabin, but this leaves Snatchy in a 1v3. Everyone is low though. These are all one hit kills to this scout. And that's scary. MBK going in with a repeat. He might want to think twice about that one. Mansi was just tucked himself in over towards Old Bomb, and that there, that position might have to solidify them the round if Snatchy has his wits about him. MBK at the E-Box. Swing from Snatchy and the aim punch sends his aim to the sky. So OG, they just about get that round on the board with 40 HP left between the two players standing. And so seven to 10, the four spy not giving the results that Sprout were hoping for. They had that early advantage, right? I think it's just the late, uh, the late Ivy take was not what uh, what uh, uh, Sprout expected. Rather, they'd already cleared that position from the start with one of the scouts, and so OG group up and go there later in the round, flank that A site. It's going to feel good. Triple nade. I imagine going into main, but <laughs> MBK hears all of them, and he can make that call. Cool. They've got a heavy A site setup, guys. We should move away from that. OG looking to take Ivy instead. But you know that Sprout really don't have anything in this round. You killed everyone. Oh dear, up the ladder. The grenade drops below and the MAC-10 will find everyone. That's great. Lots of money made for Alexi B. Might be able to drop over that orb to Mantu as well in the follow-up round. Talking of which, he's getting out into the A site. We'll check Favin just about. And Snatchy should be gone as well. One HP the difference. And it's no issue for OG. Eight to ten. <laughs> Here it is. This is the buy. This is what we've been waiting for. The force finds a bit, but not enough. Now the AWP for Snatchy and Alexa B not buying up the orb, staying with the Mac 10. We know that he likes to, you know, do these hero explosive plays with his spawns, go in, uh, get a kill, jump through a smoke, die, and get traded. Set his team up. On a map like Train, that might be very difficult on the outside to find effect with the MAC-10. He's actually throwing utility. He didn't have the spawn, so this will be the first out. And that's a great round, a great opener, rather. Alexa B actually crashing out Issa. It's not an issue, though. It's Favon putting up two at the back of Old Bomb. OG is still down Olaf, at least, but Snatchy's flanked B. 
He's here very, very quick. That's the bomb caught moving back. Fabin in with another. He's so mobile. They just saw him over on the bomb train. And there he is dealing with MBK. Snatchy gets his head removed there. The lack of head armor makes the Galil deadly indeed. And so the AWP dropped over in pop. Valder beginning a lengthy rotation back into the B site. Ooh, Ooh we got the chase camera. It's on the bomb. That little timer <laughs> ticking. And he's going to go ahead and get down the ramp. Valder. Given a bomb plant at least. Now, this flank has been heard by Diha. He knows that the B is the object of Valdez's desire. And he's coming in through the back line. Valdez's going to go aggressive. And he doesn't know it, but this could be the perfect remedy to this retake from Sprout. He deals with Favin, and now it's down to the 1v1. Diha, inside of the site, doesn't have a kit. So even though he smoked that bomb and he taps it, the spam from Valdez. Oh, Diha trying to peek over the train. The nade goes in. It's going to find great damage. <laughs> and he just gets deleted by the artillery from Valde. It's nine on the board for OG. That's unfortunate for Diha, right? Like, he would love to stick that bomb, considering he knows Valde is playing for it with an open plant. But with no kit, there's just zero chance you're getting a 10-second defuse there. And even when he drops the smoke, he can't actually see Valde, or at least can't get a clear shot on him behind oil. So they trade nades, but Valde is, is a little better. And yeah, Alexi B getting hyped up a little bit now as OG start to find uh, success on this T side. Four in a row. Double scout for Sprout. And some pistols around it. I like that Spitty has the Chris J stickers on his scout. Nice bit of... Uh Homage to an old friend. And this B site is very heavily stacked. Oh gee, they don't know it yet, but they are walking into the lion's den. Flash is good though, and that's taken the scouts off the angle. Spiddy and Favon, the scouts have suddenly come alive. What? Dennis has taken out Alexa B. And oh my goodness, it's all on to Issa. He's left scratching his head. Guys, I was meant to be holding pop. You just had to get into the B site. How hard is it? Well, they've all fallen. Issa's going to drop this little one-way smoke. That gives him vision into the connector here from ramp. But, ow. It's not nice. It's not pretty. He gets tagged by the scout on the peak while he has followed up on a Dennis. Crossing now in front of these two scouts is a scary sight to behold. Ooh. Trying to play around the smoke. Favon surely going to see him. Does hop down, get spotted. Issa, he's got to try and get across to get oh. the bomb and Spiddy. So damn quick. Maybe those Chris J stickers have imbued that scout with a little bit of power from the Dutchman. It's 11 on the board for Sprout as they get it done with Scouts and Deeks. That's unbelievable from Spiddy. The collateral on B upper as well. That's just such a rough round to receive for OG, right? The perfect, <laughs> the perfect round you think you can just drop out onto B. You know they have low money, you know there's very little they can do, but the scouts save the day. Oh dear. OG, they still have a buy, they still have fight left in them yet. They're not going to give up after one round, but that's going to give Sprout everything they need. The AWP is back out on Snatchy, Spitty doesn't want to upgrade, and I barely blame him. OG, they're going to try their hand at it again. They know that it's unlikely that Sprout will just quad stack that B site in back-to-back -back rounds. And so they look to execute early into inner. Snatchy is here. Another sniper watching upper. OG might want to smoke deep there. Could be a bit of a problem. They're going to get smoked off on ramp. Dropping that con side one as well. And yeah, it will just be a burst out through heaven with the bomb. Good shot from Snatchy. Oh, and the follow up as well. Oh, he's looking for a third. Shot misses, but Favin's there to deal with Valder. And Alexa B, he knows he's lucky to be alive. I don't know how he is. The bomb plant's going to come through for Issa, but Favin is already closing the distance, already closing the gap and playing around this smoke now. Issa going to get caught lining up utility, perhaps, as Favin goes through the smoke, and it all falls onto the MAC-10 king, Alexa B. 1v4, and he's just going to let them have it. So maybe I've called him out a little too early. MAC-10 king, he's renounced the throne. He's given it over, and it's 12 on the board for Sprout. Yeah, I mean, Alexi, but he's right. He's lost the round. He knows that. What can you really do? But the sad part about that is it's not like you're saving an AWP or anything. You're saving a MAC-10. It's not really going to do anything. And OG are broke anyway. They get the bomb plant, but oof. It's not like Lost Bonus is built up yet. It's only two in a row for Sprout. And better late than never, hey? They may have lost the opening four. Uh, and it wasn't even the guns that was the solution. It was the uh, the snipers. 
Now an eco round this. We got back to back tacles. <laughs> Two tacks in a row. I think it was one for Sprout and then one for OG. Or did OG just use them both? Didn't quite catch that, but. Regardless, it's going to give plenty of time for OG to construct whatever this eco is going to be. I think somewhat talking about the next rifle round as well, right? Because in a round like this, what can you really do other than look for kills with your deagles, hope for the best? It's going to be interesting to see if Sprout fall, uh, fall passive or try and take those aggressive uh, A main positions and pop like OG commonly did on that CT side. Because if you compare these T sides, OG, they are just going for set pieces and executing quite fast. Whereas Sprout, or at least when they had rifles on the T side, would just wait and bleed the clock out and fake OG with utility. Talking of utility, there's a few nades here on MBK and Alexa B. So maybe they can set their teammates up for success. Some nades on the bomb train. <sighs> a couple of seconds too early. Spitty does get hit, but that could have been the kill with two grenades. Not quite. And all the utility is gone already. Oh gee, they're stacked up outside of B, but Alexa B, he's gone deep in through Olaf. Hidden himself, stealing himself away. And now, like, the benefit to this is depending on Alexa B's success here at the A site, you can, you can change this up on the fly, especially with pop control taken by old mate MBK. They really wanted to to you know wait. They could go all the way to Ivy and just have a triple play there with the Deagles, but it seems like they want to support Alexa B with some pressure on main. We do have Issa on that late flank. This is in a very important spot right now. MBK gets smoked. Still waiting on Alexa B, right? He's hoping that someone makes a mistake, makes noise, give, gives anything to Sprout, or to OG rather, but Sprout just aren't doing anything. I love the crossfire on Old Hell as well. Spitty and Dennis tucked in for the long haul, covering each other's backs. And that's not a fight that Alexa B should be winning here with a MAC-10. There's an AK just holding down this tight angle. Good setup for Sprout, and the time is ticking low. And now, like, you know, wherever OG show their hand, that's where they're looking Ooh. to end up. So Alexa B is out of the equation. Issa dealing with Dennis. Spitty falling there in after. Favon back on the bomb train. Oh gets Deegue down as well. And now Snatchy tries to make a play. He pays the ultimate price. It's all on Deha. The other pole trying to rise to the occasion and damage on to Mantu. Not quite finished the job yet, but Deha now closing the gap and Mantu just playing around oh. the back of the bomb train. Hits the deck. It's 13 on the board for Sprout as Deha closes out a 1v3 to get them there. Oh, wow. I thought that uh, that setup on Ivy would have done so much more as well, but as soon as Spitty gets the opening kill, the player opposite him turns around. Oh, di sorry, dies to Ivy. Spitty turns around, gets peaked by Valde. The Deagles just overwhelm. And at least OG make that close, right? They do damage. They get a plant. It, it, in the moment, it feels so winnable. You have such a, a favor in a three on one, but. You know, D is so quick at just getting back into the site and dealing with everyone. He doesn't wait around, and despite uh, Sprout's double B setup, they're still going to pick it up. It's okay for OG, though. As, as, as much as that hurts to lose, they have a better opportunity now with full guns and with the AWP as well. Mantu's picked it up. Double AWP as well for Sprout. We've not seen this yet on the CT side. There's the proactive play. We were wondering if it would come through. Sprout taking early control. This is a big problem for OG as well. If they want to go for a B take here with a bit of an Ivy lurk, Sprout have already cleared out T-Con. They know main is uh, empty, and they can even pre-rotate a third towards B. No rush to do so with utility still left on this site right now, and Snatchy with a good amount of info from this upper angle. And in fact, it may not even be a B play right now. OG is still split, still spreading out. Sprout want more information, they're going to get it. Pop is theirs. You can even wait here with a double setup. Not only, you know, shielded from main to a degree, but you can hear OG setting up utility towards B. If Alexa B wants to, oh, he considered it. If he molly, that, that could have been huge. And he might still go back to it after, but throwing a smoke towards the A site. That's going to set Issa up to get in position and try and come in on this late lurk. And the timing he's caught, it's tremendous, tremendous. Let's see, he's coming in through the back line. Deha holding down, the flash is good. It blinds the first man in and gives him a bit more room to maneuver. Snatchy's gonna help out his Polish brethren, but this is where the flank from Issa, oh, 
Oh, oh no. no! The turnaround from Snatchy Mantu's traded, but Fabin has already arrived on his own wrap through the Pop Dog. MBK wow. falls and Fabin and Spiddy coming in on that wrap. They play that to perfection. Snatchy, I think single-handedly there, makes that whole round way more doable than it ever should have been as well. With that kill onto Issa, because suddenly it became these players in the bomb site's responsibility to deal with those guys pushing in through connector, holding... Uh, holding the top side as well, right? And while they do find them as a result, as a consequence of that, they're not holding the flank. They're not even considering it. Yeah, and on top of that, it's the double pop setup, right? It just enables such a quick flank. You know, Alexi drops that molly, but it's not, he, he can't hang around. It's not gonna do it, uh, do enough forever. And so immediately Sprout cli uh, climb up the ladder and both players are there. Even though only one peeks out, only one gets spotted, you know, there, there was just no way out of there for OG. But yeah, that kill from Issa, ooh, that needed to happen. It would have at least enabled an open plant potentially for OG. But instead, Sprout, 14 to nine, looking to do this the hard way, four in a row. Since they found their first on the CT side off the back of the scouts, they have not stopped. And OG, yeah, what can you do here? You've got to buy. Don't want to play for OT at this kind of scoreline. You're going to save a bit of money. MBK is laid out of spawn with Mantu, but coming to terms with the situation they're in. This is Sprout's map pick. Keep that in mind, right? We got Inferno as a second. We know OG like that map. But this is a very impressive display from the German-Polish team right now. Worth noting the only German representation left in ESO One Cologne. Mouse Sports, the org, at least eliminated yesterday, and Big gone the day before. Sprout were, in part, part of the problem for Big, knocking them down to the lower bracket on their opening game. And right now, they might go the full distance. They might go to the playoffs. That's where they're aiming for. Winner of this series heads to the quarterfinals. OG with an outside execute. Howdy and the pop dog gets smoked off, but flashed out, and here come OG. And already four players here for Sprout. That's because of Snatchy outside of the B site. They boosted Deha up on top of the bomb train. He takes one down from this position, and he's still just raining down death from above. It all falls apart for OG. Sprout onto 15, map point on their map pick. And this would be a dominant victory as well, right? They go 10-5 in that first half of play. Since then, OG, they come into this second half. They get the pistol, they get the conversions. And then, if you remember, it was that little cheeky scout round after losing their first rifle that has propelled Sprout over and onto the finish line. Yeah, I love how much Sprout are using OG's utility against them. OG threw that top site, uh, so top train smoke uh, to stop someone from one weighing on top of the bomb train. You often see that. Uh, and so, you know, Diha boosting up, like you said, just uses that smoke as a one way instead. And it just gets worse and worse. Favin dropping MBK right out of the pop dog with that flash. And now OG, they're just going to crunch in, or they're just going to hit the B site. Sprout already rotating in. Diha doubling. It just gets worse by the second four on two, and this one might just be done. Mansu 1v4. Can he manage anything here? The bomb down, and he's trying to keep OG's lifeline here on train, but with Favin and Spiddy both on the other side of oil. They spot him. They've done damage. He does get the first kill. But up above, it's Snatchy hitting the deck next. The wrap round is coming in from Dennis, though, and he's got it dead to right. Sprout, they take their map pick 16 to 9 as they get this one over the line. That leaves them 1-0 up in this series. And in first...